We're here at Munger Landing in Duluth, Minnesota to perform remedial dredging and cover operations. Over 34 acres roughly. We're here to dredge varying depths based on contamination levels. The contaminants include PCBs, dioxins, and furans. This project is important because it's removing historical contamination from the St. Louis River, which is very close to Lake Superior. It's a huge resource for the area. There's a lot of different jurisdictions that overlap within the project area. The state of Wisconsin, the state of Minnesota, EPA is involved, and also the Army Corps of Engineers. All of those different agencies have different rules and regulations that we have to follow and we have to make sure that everyone stays informed as we move forward. We mobilized Longer Landing in Duluth. We really began operations on site with construction of the bag field at Hallett Dock 7 and mobilization of all our dredging equipment. The first year of dredging, we had three dredges that were plumbed together at the first booster and then we pumped through approximately two and a half miles of a common pipeline to the bag field at Hallett Dock. Year two, we mainly dredged in Wisconsin and had a little bit of work to do in Minnesota. Working in the tight areas that we were given and the amount of pipeline that needed to be put in there, we had to do a lot of pre-planning, running pipeline in specific areas, running them together, splitting them apart so both dredges could work simultaneously without interfering with one another. Uh, some of the bigger challenges uh, we faced on this project is shallow water, a lot of wood debris that we had to go through, and that presents a different challenge in itself to get that wood out of the way. And I try to get as much production out of the dredge at all times. And we're pumping at about 4,500 GPM to the bag field. As the material comes in to the geotextile tubes, the water and the solids are separated, and then that water is what we treat in this treatment plant. One of the biggest things we have to do right away is attack solids and try to get the solids out of the water because that's where most of the contamination resides. From there, the water comes out, flows into the sump, and processes it through the water treatment plant. The water treatment plant consists of multimedia filters and granulated activated carbon vessels. What that does, it takes any contaminants that may be in the water still and pulls them into those vessels. And then it's ready to be discharged back to the river. To monitor the performance of the water treatment plant, we collect samples as the raw water comes into the plant, in between each treatment process, and then when the finished water goes back out to the river. So we're sampling at each point so we can see how each process is performing, how much of each contaminant we're removing, and to ensure that we're meeting the standards that the water has to meet before it goes back into the environment. Once we're done dredging the entire footprint, we'll be placing a sand cover over everything. I'm in very depths, mainly between 6 inches and 12 inches, and then in certain areas re-establish habitat. We'll be placing a biomedium mix, which is material dredge from Perch Lake just down the road, mixed with sand at a one-to-one -one ratio. On the spreading side, we had 16,600 feet of pipe to install for the spreader system. First part of the phase out here we do is an open pipe discharge with just the pipe and nothing on the end of it except a man float and it releases with an open pipe into the designated area. The spread pattern's running about 14 to 16 foot into the water, real shallow water, three, four feet deep. Once that area is complete, they'll take a survey of that and then we'll put the secondary material spec for the other cap lift to meet spec. Once that is done and we meet required thickness, we'll actually hook up the broadcast spreader and move into a different DMU. To complete the cover operation, we'll be utilizing the spreader Nina. That's one of our patented broadcast capping systems, and we will feed the material to the spreader from the lamp plant at Hallett Dock 7. That material will all get pumped through a separate pipeline, which runs basically three miles the opposite way of the dredge material to the spreader system. One of the biggest challenges we've had here is maintaining the strict turbidity requirements. They are some of the strictest requirements we've seen for turbidity. We'll be putting the clean sand cover back on in hopes of restoring a clean riverbed for all the fish, all the microorganisms. And just restoring the environment back to the way that it should be, it, especially in a beautiful community like Duluth. And this project is going to help move this area towards that goal.